And welcome back everyone, I'm December, and welcome back to Siberia. Last time we talked to this little prick and he came on to us, so let's just run away. Run the fuck away. That's not running away. Run faster. This is a very, very impressive university, isn't it? I have to say, I've never been in a university that looked like this. This is beyond amazing. But we have to talk to the head of the university department, because they have some beef with us. Delicious, delicious beef. They must be around here, I think. I don't know, actually. No, they're not in here. This is the auditorium. Judging from the red carpet, of course. Where were the rectors? I think to the left. Ah, this must be it. God, what a majestic place. Really. I have come, gentlemen. That's what she said. Hi. Do you just lie around here all day? Do you? Do you really? Good day to you, gentlemen. Tell me, young lady, to what do we owe this pleasure? Please do be brief. We do not have very much time on our hands. As rectors of this university, we have serious matters to attend to, and our time is precious. I have heard you wish to meet the owner of the train that is currently in your station. May I know the reason for your summons? We are surprised that your train has not yet left, miss. The situation is most regrettable. The rules do clearly state that trains are meant to come and go and not remain stationary at a platform. Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. We agree then, dear colleagues, that what we're dealing with is deviant behavior. This matter really is cause for concern. It's a clockwork train, you see? So it needs winding up again? Unfortunately, there is no equipment in the station to do this. A clockwork train? That's strange. How very quaint. You mean <laughs> it's some sort of mechanical toy? You are causing a hindrance to us, miss. I am very hopeful that I will find what I need along the wall. The wall? The wall. Miss, that really is not a suitable place for you to go. Especially for a young lady. You see, miss, we freely admit that every day we praise the existence of that particular edifice. We owe the integrity of our dear university and the fine education it provides to the wall. It protects us from harm and invasion from the unknown. May God protect us from what is beyond those ramparts, miss. Please believe me. I don't have any choice. I must continue my journey. Uh, such a decision is a correct one, since it's in line with regulations. Thus, your train will indeed be able to leave. And consequently, cease to obstruct our station. Man, you guys have epic mustaches. Really. And, uh, yeah. So we have to move our train, basically. Uh, hi, by the way. I'm Kate. I haven't introduced myself. My name is Kate Walker. Walker, Walker, haven't we already had a Miss Walker? Ethnology Masters, September 1953, if my memory serves me correctly. Perfectly well, my dear colleague. But if I may be so bold, it was a Mr. Walker and not a Miss. It was Bill Walker, sat this June 68 exams. The impudent fool turned up for the oral assessment in jeans! Jeans! strict internal regulations which explicitly state the required uniform for the occasion. Pure incitement. It was scandalous. Sadly, we have seen worse since. Young people lack all respect of traditional values. Tradition, young lady. One must always uphold tradition. Don't you point that thing at me. You see, I didn't actually intend to stop here. But the springs of my train gave up, you see? No, not really. You mean to say you're not a student? No! You have arrived a little late in the term, miss. Enrollment for this year has already terminated. 
But as rectors of this university and therefore representatives of its highest authority, we could bend the rules a little, if you like. I'm listening. You don't understand. I'm a lawyer from New York. Or rather, Valadilen, more precisely. My client wants to buy out an old mechanical toy factory, but its heir isn't actually dead and is living somewhere in Siberia. I've got to get to him to sign the sales contract. You see? Not really. This is a most peculiar tale. A kerfuffle of the highest order. Kerfuffle. We have an excellent law school, <laughs> if you should ever change your mind. I love that word. Kerfuffle of the highest order. Can you possibly help me out here? Miss, your insistence is almost verging on indecency. We cannot constantly be at your disposal. We have many other requests to attend to. I'm sure. If you don't mind, could you not disturb us all the time? Thank you. Okay, you called me. And how can you be that busy? What do you do? Trim your mustaches together? Excuse me. Miss, we find ourselves terribly put out by the presence of your... Ch Indeed, the situation is very regrettable. Your huge locomotive is very cumbersome. That's what she said. A train should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. Yes, I get the rule, man. Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean anything to you by chance? Ah, one of the brightest, ah. most idealistic intellects to have graced our university. Hans Vorlberg. I remember speaking to him once. I was still a student at the time. He just stared at me, lost in thought for a while. He scarcely ever said a word. But how can one forget him? Idealistic? I'll grant you that. But bright? Oh, don't go too far. He was completely incapable of passing any exams. All he ever did was to sit in on lessons, and not many of them either. Paleontology, mainly. He had an unhealthy passion for mammoths, which matched the state of his intellect perfectly. That is to say, prehistoric. Burn. Prehistoric? How dare you? A little far-fetched, maybe. But he did have flashes of intellectual brilliance, comprehensible only to high-minded scholars who hold no score by appearances. My dear colleague, your hasty conclusions are somewhat cavalier. My assessment is wholly accurate. The boy was a little odd. You must concur if my father, who was rector of the university at the time, had not shown great indulgence towards him. Hans Vorlberg would have never attended this establishment. What about the bandstand, then? Is that the work of a deranged mind? Even after all these years, you are still jealous of it. My dear colleagues, I beseech you, let's show some decorum. We have a visitor. Uh, what do you want with Hans Vorlberg, miss? Are you a member of his family? No, no, not at all. I'm looking for him to clear up an inheritance matter. Is he still here? What? Here? At the university? <laughs> no, not at all. He left a long time ago. Yes, a very long time ago. The very year I was nominated to this position, in fact. Almost 50 years ago already. The poor soul moved on once he learned all he needed to know about mammoths. Ah, this establishment was never quite the same after his departure, it must be said. You mean to say it was never as bad? All that Oddball brought to this university was his misplaced fantasies! Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's try to retain the calm and level-headedness that befits our position. Wow, you guys talk a lot. And 50 years ago you were nominated for this position? Don't worry, man. Your mustache doesn't look a day over 40. You're so beautiful. That idea of the station aviary is really very original. It's the pride of our university. One of the specialties taught here is zoology, you see, and more particularly, ornithology. Proper study and instruction should not be limited to books. Observation of living matter is indissociable from theoretical questions. It contains some very rare specimens that have been brought back from far away exotic countries, especially for our university, by the world's most intrepid explorers. Do you remember Alexander Valembois and his peculiar bird? Absolutely. His gift produced some very embarrassing long-term consequences. A poison chalice, indeed. 
It must be said, the situation could have been much worse, however. Oh, yes, it could have been terribly problematic. Terribly? Hey guys, I need some money, by the way. Some sailors have agreed to tow the train, but I don't have enough money to pay them. I was wondering if you could help me out. For a while. <laughs> I could work for the money. Yeah, work it. Uh, please wait, miss. We have certain confibulations to attend to. Confibulation? That is right. We must confibulate between ourselves. A collegiate decision must be taken. I hope that we are not indisposing you in any way. No, no, no. Just conf <clears throat> confibulate. Why not? If it helps us get rid of that train. My word, that is a fine idea. Do tell. What do you have in mind, gentlemen? Hmm. When you arrived here, you must have noticed a splendid bandstand which honors the main university courtyard. I sure did. A unique piece of mechanical craftsmanship which no longer works, alas. Why, yes, we have very moving memories of its melodies. We're prepared to offer you a financial reward if you can set it working again. With pleasure. What do I have to do? Unfortunately, my dear, Time and rust have taken their toll on this university, and our automatons no longer have a spring in their step. <laughs> you are going to have to be resourceful. To tell you the truth, there are a number of complex mechanisms here in Barakstadt, and it would appear that we have unfortunately lost their operating instructions. Your train, however, is an extremely ingenious invention, so you should be no stranger to complex mechanisms, should you? We are therefore counting on your ingenuity, miss. I hope that I can show myself worthy of your faith in me, gentlemen. Well, my dear colleagues, one more university matter nicely tied up. Yep, nicely tied up by making someone else, a stranger, do it. Don't worry, I'm resor resourceful enough. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. By the way, where is your accent from? Because it's confusing. So we have to f find a way to fix the bandstand, eh? So we can get the money. So we can give that money to the boat people. So they can tow our train. It's very complicated, isn't it? Natura non facit saltus. That's a... That is an epic library, holy shit. I wish I could study in a place like this. I would never leave. Hey! A pickable item. Was this... And some people! Hey! Just put it in your boob. Amazone, Memories of an Expedition. Incidentally, one of the creators of this game, Benoit Sokal, actually made a game called Amazone. I never played it because I was never a fan of the graphics, but I heard it's very good. So is this... is this a book about birds? Is it birds again? Yeah, it's pretty... birds. The Red Amazone Cuckoo. Oh, that's the selfish bird that moves and kills other unborn baby birds. The red cuckoo inhabits the more and more isolated and denser areas of the Amazon forest. Uh, the explorer may nevertheless have an excellent view of the bird when the animal ventures to lower branches in search of forest sauvignon grapes. So it likes wine? That's my kind of bird. Reproduction, hey. Like other species of cuckoo, the red Amazon cuckoo delegates the task of raising its young to other birds. Yep, this is pretty lazy. You can read this, by the way, but I guess it just details the life of the Amazon cuckoo. And here it is, getting drunk. It's beautiful. Can we talk to the students? Thank you. 
No, we can't. I can talk to you, though. Hi. Excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> can I disturb you a second? Or more? No. Oh. You could be a little bit nicer about it. Yeah. Keep quiet. In case you haven't noticed, we're somewhere that requires silence and tranquility. Sorry. Fine. I'll go be all silent and tranquil in another area of this library. Anything that we can explore in the library? There must be something we can pick up. Anything in here? Oh, a ladder. Go, Kate. Climb that ladder. What's in here? Ooh, a book. What is that? The Illustrated Dictionary of Plants and Mushrooms. Sounds fascinating. The Angala Cola. Is a mushroom without stem that has a chewy texture. Okay, member. It's native Amazonians use it to get high and experienced great orgasms. And hunter is then able to aim. Beautiful. It's a great porn book. Let's get out of here. Is this where the students hide their porn, by the way? Can I actually talk to the student about any of the books? Hi again. Sorry for disturbing. Excuse me. <coughs> Can I just- No. You could be- So not nice. Can we talk about the books? No, I can't. That's great. What is that? Press cuts? I haven't seen that before. Oh, I did. Never mind. Local figure dies. We saw this. We saw everything. Faxes and stuff. Okay. Let's explore more of the university then. Because none of the students want to talk to us. You know, for such a beautiful place, it seems oddly desolate. Only three students and teachers and boat people. Bergstadt. It's a badass name. Oh, another person. Hi. Do you want to talk to me? Or are you busy looking at that skeleton? Excuse me. Don't shout. Sir, please, just a moment. Yes, what is it? I'm not deaf, you know. I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, but... This young Mammothus Primigenius is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Fantastic. Uh, yes. Probably. What do you mean, probably? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? Uh, well, first of all, my name is Kate. Nice to meet you. To tell you the truth, I don't know very much about mammoths. And I'm not here as a student. In fact, I'm a lawyer. It's all right. Nobody is perfect. All the same, the study of the Pleistocene period is fascinating. I'm sure it is. But I'm sorry to say my current mission is totally monopolizing my time. Um, another time, maybe. Ah, oh, that's what they all say. But anyway, let me present myself. I'm Cornelius Ponce, Emeritus Professor and Lecturer at the University of Barockstadt. I'm proud to say that I'm head of the Department of Paleozoology at our university. Kate Walker, pleased to meet you. But we're so polite. So let's tell him what we're doing here. It wasn't really my intention to stop off here, but I'll confess, this university is really very impressive. Ah, indeed. There's such a tradition of learning here. And so much knowledge, a real depth of culture, intelligence, and gray matter. I myself did my studies here and never left. Actually, I'm here because I've been summoned by the rectors of the university. Oh, I see. You must have made a mistake on your enrollment form. Uh, oh, no, no. I haven't come here to study. I have an important matter of inheritance to attend to. I have to find the heir. And you hope you will find him here? I'm not altogether sure. But you see, my train broke down coming into Barakstadt Station. In that case, my dear, you must come to one of my lectures. Uh, here's a question for you. 
Do you know what the Probosidian order is? Pro probo the what? Probo whatian? Yeah. Ah, you see? There are gaps in your knowledge that need refreshing. Sure. Definitely need refreshing, not like I never knew them. I feel I've lost my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Help me? Oh, my dear child, you've chosen your moment. I absolutely must finish off my lecture for this afternoon. It's a lecture about mammoths? Oh, yes and no. More specifically, it is about their migration. Do excuse me, I need to concentrate. Oh, okay. You're still talking to me, though. Keep concentrating. To tell you the truth, I'm looking for Mr. Hans Vorlberg. He's the sole heir of a very unusual factory. My company is in charge of negotiations for the takeover of this factory. Uh, at last word, he was living in Siberia. So, as soon as my train is ready, I'll be continuing my journey eastwards. Siberia. Ah, Siberia. But what was it you said again? Said what? You mentioned a name. The person you are looking for. Hans? Vorlberg. Hans Vorlberg. Do you know him? Hans Vorlberg. How could I forget him? Such an extraordinary fellow. So inventive. We shared a passion for mammoths, you know. And we bonded over this passion. Without it, I confess, I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless retard like Hans. Wow. <laughs> At the time, we were both students. Well, sort of. Put it this way. Hans had special permission to attend paleontology lectures. You see, he didn't really have the necessary qualifications. In exchange, Hans did a few odd jobs around the university. Like the bandstand? Your Hans Vorlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. I'm not sure, my dear. Hans was above all questions of money and business. Just to imagine him running a factory, <laughs> perish the thought. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? He was always a mystery to me. He never said very much, and never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through his incredible mechanical contraptions. His inventions, I admit, have been much appreciated by the university. The few times we really did talk, it was about his strange interest for mammoths and a doll. Some sort of doll that obsessed him. A doll, you say? Yes. He kept talking about it. One day he described it to me. A sort of children's toy. A miniature mammoth mounted by a mount. It appears he found it in a cave not far from his home. The event all sounds very dramatic. His account was slightly confused, but it awoke a great interest in me. What do you mean? To my knowledge, there was only one tribe who made figurines featuring a mount, and that tribe is the Yukols. They live in the farthest reaches of Siberia, and for them, the dolls constituted a sacred object, illustrating one of their central legends, how such a doll made the journey from the frozen Siberian north to a cave in the French Alps, is a mystery to me. Even today, it is beyond my comprehension. Have you considered that Hans Varlberg was maybe making it up? You said yourself he didn't seem to have all his mental facilities intact. No, that's impossible. Hans couldn't invent the story like that. The doll is a sacred part of the Siberia legend. He described it to me in exact detail. Siberia itself is a chimera that paleontologists of the world are very fond of pursuing. Okay. Well, so Hans basically was here, but he only attended this school for his passion of mammoths because of that mammoth doll, which we incidentally have in the train. I'm sure this guy will be very interested to see it. To tell you the truth, I'm looking... For oh, we just talked about... Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. I'll leave you in peace. Sorry? No, I didn't want to end the conversation. Do excuse me, Professor. Ex excuse me. What is it you want? I want to know about the other topics. About money. Uh, Professor, uh, how do I say this? You see, I didn't think I'd need a lot of money when I set out. And it turns out I need money after all. It's a delicate matter, I know, but I was wondering if you could help me out. 
My dear, it would be a pleasure, but you see, I barely have enough myself to cover my meager expenditure on what I'm paid by the university. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to offend or... However, if we look at the example of Hans, it is true that our university always rewards people who perform some service for it. This is our dear rector's jurisdiction, however. Fair enough. So we have our deal. We fix the bandstand, we get our money. If I were to say, Forest Sauvignon to you, what would you say? Oh, let's see. Sauvignon. Sauvignon? I would say it's some kind of tropical shrub, don't you think? We are talking about the same plant, then. It is a very rare shrub with small, juicy fruits. I found a book about the Amazon, and it says that there are even Sauvignon plants growing right here in Barakstadt. You wouldn't know where, would you? Mm, Amazon Sauvignon plants here? No. No, I don't think there are any. Highly implausible, but uh, you should ask the station master. He is keeper of the greenhouse at our university, so he could tell you more than me. Oh, thanks very much. Hmm, I think you're lying. But I will talk to the station master, because he won't be able to lie as well as you. My train stopped in a peculiar aviary. It's very odd. A lot of bird species seem to seek harbor there. Ornithology is far from being my favorite subject, but I must concede that the station is the pride of the university. It was initially intended for teaching purposes, but then birds started arriving from all around the world. <laughs> it seems that there are still rare species breeding there and flourishing. Are there? Can you give me an example? Hmm. I have been told about a kind of bird with peculiar habits. Let's see now, the, uh, uh, the Amazon cuckoo, that's right. But, uh, oh, I'm so foolish, I can't remember what was so special about it. Just that its behavior is very peculiar. The Amazon? Where's the Amazon? What is the Amazon? I'm sorry, my dear, but one cannot learn everything in a lifetime. Thank you very much. Where is the Amazon? What is the Amazon? What does the Amazon do? I do not know. Uh, do we tra talk about everything? Maybe the train. Arriving in Barakstadt is an amazing experience. I've never seen such a station. Uh, you came by train? Yeah. Yes, in a kind of clockwork train with a spring mechanism that winds down. Regularly. You mean you drive a train? Young ladies of today never cease to amaze me. Oh, no. I'm not the engineer. The train's engineer is actually an automaton. I am sorry, all this probably sounds very strange. A clockwork train? Driven by an automaton? I once knew a man long ago who could have invented such a train. It was he who designed the bandstand in the main square. Ah, to think that he was even capable of creating such a gadget. He was astounding, a true genius. But oddly, at the same time, he was also... almost a child. It was as if his mental and physical evolution had definitively halted at the age of ten. Can you believe that? Uh, yes. I think I can believe that. At least I'm beginning to. I'm definitely beginning to. But Hans was definitely a genius with the mind of a ten-year-old, and the imagination to build robots of a genius. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all. Not at all. But I know what to give you. Not that. I will bring to you the mammoth doll because I'm sure you're going to be interested in it. Definitely. Hopefully. Probably. Maybe. Who is it this time? Hello? So, you got him then, this air? Ah, it's you, Mr. Marson. Good day, and, and how are you, sir? I'll feel a whole lot better when this whole business is over and the sales contract is signed. Where the hell are you? I'm in Bergstadt. What? What in God's name are you doing there? It's a magnificent university town. It would appear Hans Varlberg once passed by here uh, several years ago. So if he isn't there anymore, then there's no point hanging around. I hear what you're saying, sir, but I have good reason to believe that Hans Varlberg is still alive. 
For the time being, I'm trying to gather extra information from people who have known him. What's your next destination? I'm not exactly sure, yet. Doesn't sound like you know too much, Kate. I just need a bit of time, Mr. Morrison. Yeah, well, time is what you ain't got. Keep me posted. What an asshole! Jesus! He's such a hard-ass boss. Can we talk to you about stuff right now? And then not hit on me, please? Hello. Hey, just who do you think? Hey, he's Spunky. I hey, don't play hard. Listen, kid. So nothing new. He's still hitting on us. So this is the bandstand that Hans created. We still don't have anything to put in there to make it work. So let's leave for the time being and get the mammoth doll. Because I think that's what the professor really wants to see. Hey again, Oscar. How you doing? Chilling? Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. Awaiting your instructions. Do you have any money on you? Oscar, the sailors have agreed to tow the train, but they want to get paid for it. I suppose you have some petty cash on board to cover traveling costs? No, there is nothing like that. You will note, however, Kate Walker, that every effort has been made to ensure maximum passenger comfort. Okie dokie. I'll have to sort this one out by myself then. Why didn't you bring any credit cards or something? There must be an ADM around here somewhere. You don't know where I might find any Amazon Forest Sauvignon, do you? No, Kate Walker? No. I doubt he's gonna help us with anything. Oscar? In a while. So, see you later, alligator, Oscar. Now let's get that doll. Put it in your boob. That's fine. It's nice and safe now. Uh, Professor Dude. Uh, I got the mammoth doll. You're gonna love this. It's exactly what you wanted to see for years and years and years. I'm sure. Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. Professor, I have brought you something that should be of interest to you. Look. What have you got there, then? Let's see. An effigy of a mammoth. But this is Hans' doll, is it not? Yes, of course it is. How on earth did you... Oh, my God. It's in my hands. It exists. It really exists. Please, please do excuse me. I'm, I'm deeply, deeply moved. You see? Your Hans and my Varlberg heir are one and the same. This is incredible. After all these years, how can I ever thank you, my dear? Oh, I must waste no time. I'm, I'm off to my laboratory. I must study this carefully. May I borrow your treasure a moment? Uh, well, actually, uh... Don't worry, miss. I will take the greatest care of it. But I need to study it. You see, it has such importance to me that this very afternoon I shall deliver an impromptu lecture to my students about this very object. If you are interested in Hans Vorlberg, then it is essential that you attend. Hmm? Do you think so? Obviously. Give me your telephone number and I will call you the moment my lecture begins. I will return you your doll at the end. You have my word. Okay. Why do you walk like that? <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so we can go join the lecture. But I will do that in the next episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment because I love 
reading your guys' words. They are amazing. As amazing as this game. I'll see you next time.